Okay, um, how you guys doing? Doing a leveling kit on a 2017 Dodge Ram four wheel drive 1500 with the 5.7 Hemi. Uh, I already did one side that way to make this video go a little bit quicker. Um, do some side, I'm a mechanic, do some side work at home. This is a install kit in the driveway. Get rid of that it's kind of funky um, so this is the leveling kit bolts onto the top of the strut um, to make the job easier well they, they sent these bolts right here with the kit it's really complicated to try to get these all lined up and started when you're trying to line everything up so I went down to the hardware store got some all thread uh, made some studs that fit the nuts that they did supply um, with it so Go ahead and get this video started here. First thing you gotta do is get the vehicle jacked up. As you can see, I just got a floor jack right there under the center of the vehicle. Uh, let's go ahead and get this tire off here. Set up. I didn't really think about that, did I? Let me grab something here and I'll hold my phone down. There we go, there's a decent view. Got some basic tools here. Um, a few sockets, nothing too major. Got some, some pair of pliers. Got a wheel lock key, so we got a wheel lock. Make sure you. I always like to get the wheel locks off first. A little tray to keep all my bolts in. A few tools. side go ahead and uh, take a look here so what we're gonna be doing is removing this strut assembly right here and adding a spacer that goes in here you see I already pulled the bolts from right there top of the strut so it moves so now I'll go ahead and disassemble it um, need the I did on the other side was remove this sway bar bolt Remove this upper ball joint and remove the brake caliper out of the way. Um, then you also got this big bolt right here, holds the bottom of the strut. So we'll go ahead and pull these out now. All situated here. Got a decent view. Should be alright. So, now my brake caliper here, it's a 13 millimeter. Usually I like to have a pair of pliers, Nipix seems to be my favorite pair. Because um, the caliper slide pins will tend to move on you. And put those bolts in there. Um, grab a, a couple pry bars. Um, big hammer. Yeah, this should be a. Relatively simple thing for most people to do in their driveway, I think. If you have a little bit of mechanical experience, I like to compress the caliper pistons so the caliper will come off easy. Go ahead and let's see right here. There's uh, your ABS wire and your brake line. I like to separate these. Not necessarily pull out the ABS sensor, but you do want to make sure to take caution and not pull that cord as you could end up with an ABS light when you're done with this. So I'll just pull that, let that cord hang right there. Let's go ahead and get this back. Here. We'll go ahead and pull the caliper off there. bit they'll probably end up falling off so you just like that uh, go ahead and lay your brake pads off to the side mind you this is a brand new truck 4400 miles on it 
Um, next step I'll probably go ahead and go do is uh, get that spray bar link off here. Um, let's see what's up with that. Oh, right here, uh, the top spray bar bolt is a 16 millimeter. You can't get it really get a electric crack gun on it or anything like that. Pull this guy. That way the control arm can flex a little more. Pull that off. You want to try to note and keep all your bolts together. Sometimes those bushings are a little tough. Got a little pair of pliers here. Great thing about these pliers is they're adjustable. So you can get them just the size, the size you need. And I don't want to come out. I don't really want to rip that bush in. in here. And I'll probably just go ahead and wait a second before we get too crazy on that. And mess the bushing up. So next, let's go ahead and uh, drive socket here. Go ahead and loosen the bolt on your tie rod end. There is that one. Uh, this one probably pretty much just have to do it by hand in your upper ball joint. Like to leave the, the thread the nut off there. Make sure you guys can see what's going on. And leave it on just a couple threads. That way, when you pop this, don't all just separate on you. Also, go ahead and uh, got a big socket here. This bolt is a 24 millimeter right there. See that lower strut bolt? Pull that. Gotta use my big pliers because these things grab. As good as or better than a wrench. Use my half inch electric impact, makes life a lot easier. Go ahead and pull that strut out. See, as you can see, the strut is now loose. But you have to disconnect all this stuff to get, get it out of the way. So, what I like to use to get these off is a big sledgehammer. You want to make sure you hit right here. Want egg sandwich? No. Okay. Give it a couple of hits. Pops the tie rod right off. Lay it up over the sway bar. Same thing with your upper ball joint. Hit it right on the back side of the knuckle. Steering knuckle as square as possible. And it should pop down. Just like that. Pretty good wax. Go ahead and take the pressure off the upper control arm and now you got all the access you need room so you got what uh, pretty good and long pry bar here position it in the control arm to put some pressure down and there's our square bar bushing just came off there no issues and go ahead and position the strut out of the way out the vehicle so we can add that spacer there's our strut. It's pretty quick, easy. Um, oh, I gotta find where I put the bolts. So oh, there's my top strut bolts. Pull, pull them out. Go ahead and bolt this spacer on here. Super simple install. You can see there's the three studs there, three holes there, and basically just adds a little bit on there so spacer it only does go on one way and there it is on the second try then start to go grab my gun and the proper socket here sorry my phone's blurry phone's new google should be the 15 millimeter three it's impact i just went ahead and used the stock uh, bolts instead of the ones supplied 
So I'm going to use those on the studs that they sent me. And so I like to always go ahead and start my bolts first. Get them pretty tight. There probably is a torque, torque spec, but I don't really go by those. So I'll go ahead and grab. Well, it did come with three lock washers and three regular washers. And, oh no. Somehow, I misplaced some. And then uh, go and grab these, grab your strut. Now there's there's my extra washers right down there on those bolts already. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and position the strut back into place. Let's use that in the phone here. Does that look good? That looks pretty good. This is where it gets a little tricky. I'm trying to line everything up. So usually what I'll do is I'll just start with the nuts and get the strut up in place. Get my other washers and stuff here positioned. So you want to make sure you use the flat washer, the lock washer that are supplied with the kit. Keeps the bolts from backing off. The kit does recommend using a uh, thread locker to keep the bolts tight, but um, typically you don't ever see these back off per se. Um, and since um, the bolts are, the studs are a little different position here, uh, we will have to turn the bottom of the strut. But I'll do that after I get the strut started. That way you can line it up properly. Go ahead and double check this here. You can see what's going on. Um, as you can see, I got this pry bar right here so I could pry the lower control arm down. Um, all your studs are in there started everything looks good there um, you want to take a look the there's two narrower bolts here I'm pretty sure these were the back two or to the inside of the frame rail and this one is to the outer edge by the tire I don't know if you saw that but so it does only line up one way so we'll go ahead and you know ignite your hand and then here's the fun part is trying to line all this up properly. Press down on the pray bar with my leg and get the strut into position here. Should have put the nut on top. Pretty close though. There it is. Go ahead and put your flat washer, then your lock washer, and then your nut on top so it looks like that. Then start all three of these. Not. 
thread that one down a little bit farther. Well, with the studs, it makes it a lot easier, as you can see, like the factory. If I was trying to use the bolts supplied with the kit, you'd have to be wrestling the strut, trying to start the bolt into the top of that bracket. And that's kind of what you want to see. Flat washer, lock washer, bolt. Okay. The bolts supplied with my kit are 17 millimeter. Um, find my wrench here. Ratcheting in on them. Tighten that up a little bit. That way, kind of more in place. Um, so, when I pull these strut bolts out, it's definitely a lot easier to put them in this way. And plus, also, if you're off roading or something and you catch the bolts in this way, can end up damaging the threads. Uh, high, yeah, you damage the threads more being out that way, so I like to put them in this way. Um, never ran into a clearance issue. So you do have to pry down on the lower control arm, get all this lined up. I like to just give it a little tap of the hammer. And we gotta turn the strut a little bit. Another thing you can do to turn that strut. So you gotta work around a little. Let's see if we can get it. So we'll go ahead and take another pry bar and turn the strut. And now you gotta get the bolt through right there, and then you can go ahead and tap the bolt in. And there you go. And so, even with the bolt in backwards, you still have pl plenty of clearance. Shouldn't really affect anything, and it's a little more protected by the control arm. And now we just gotta reassemble it. That's it. So Put the big bolt back on there. Go ahead and, uh, it should be right there. So the nut is a 24 millimeter and the bolt is a 21 millimeter. Just so you know for your information, just go ahead and use my pliers and the bolt. Go ahead and get that tight. And I'll go ahead and use my 17 millimeter wrench up here on my top nut. Tighten all this down. Usually the first side is the harder side. That's why I went ahead and did it. That way you can just kind of make it a little shorter. Pretty tight. Well, once the vehicle's on there, you got all your all the pressures on them. Okay, Get this stuff out of the way because the next trick here is to grab another floor jack. You're gonna have to, as you can see now that we got it raised up. It's a little tougher to get this control arm here because of the extra space. So you want to try to have another jack. So this is my extra floor jack here. I like to go right under the strut mount. You're gonna wanna leave clearance right here, right in between the uh, steering knuckle and the lower control arm, so it's moving around a little bit. And then 
and as you see the truck will move you have to put some pressure on it and we can start lining let's see here position my phone down here again let's see if I can go back up to here the reassembly so my phone don't fall over so I'll go ahead and work this upper control arm back into place in this joint there we go just like that start the bolt there go ahead and put your uh, high rod end in there the proper nut there Go ahead and get my upper ball joint tight. So what could happen is right here the ball joint could spin, so you gotta watch that. A little trick if that does happen, you take a tie bar, press down on the control arm, and not drop your tools. So then they'll roll down the right way. Go ahead and hold it down. That way it don't spin on you. There's typically a, a ball joint uh, torque spec. Most ball joints typically around 70 pounds. Snap. I was putting the to get them good tight. On. Well, I'm making a YouTube video, guys. See? Shit. Go ahead and get that tight. Go ahead and uh, put your sway bar bushing back in there. The washer. Drop a shot. Do you want a burrito? Yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead and uh, put our brake pads back in the proper way. One way you can tell if you get confused is the markings on the back. Make sure you don't lose none of the little clips right here. Go ahead and put your caliper back on. Tighten this down. Just get everything snug, tight, and then should be good to go. Okay. Go ahead and make sure you reroute your ABS sensor into the hold downs because if you don't uh, could end up rubbing a tire or something else like that you just push in there there um, make sure you get all your bolts tight because you don't want to leave no bolts loose so let my impact gun go in my socket right here yeah that's spinning that's where you need the Second hand and a pair of pliers. Let's see how this goes out there. There we go. And so after rolling down the driveway, and a pair of pliers lost, and there they are. I'll go ahead and make sure you get those tight. Get those tight. Make sure all your got enough clearance, pull on everything. I'd like to go back and double check and make sure all this stuff is tight. Not tight. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is leave a loose bolt, especially when it's not your vehicle. You're working on it for someone else. Because then you get upset. 